What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today I'm going to share with you one of the exercises from my Chop Shop series based on the major scale. My Chop Shop series is a series of exercises that I put together to help my students be able to play faster and cleaner. And while we are learning to play faster and cleaner, they also go over your major scales, your minor scales, uh, triads, chords, all kinds of patterns, anything imaginable to try to get your fingers moving faster and cleaner while learning the basics of music and music theory. Today we are going to take on the major scales with a very effective and pretty common technique exercise that I call 1-2-3-1. And I call it 1-2-3-1 because that is the pattern that you play on every degree of your major scale. Uh, degree meaning each note in the scale. So if we are going to do this in concert B-flat, which is G on your alto sax or C on your tenor saxophone, we start on the one and we play up three notes. So we go one, two, three. And then back to the one. And that is why I call it one, two, three, one, because you basically play that pattern on every single note in the scale. So you're gonna play one, two, three, one, then two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, and so on and so forth. So it's gonna sound like this. Here's one, two, three, one again. Then started on the two. So that one started on A. The first one is G and then it goes to A. Here it is again, G and then A. Then the next one of course would be B and we would go B, C, D, B because we're following that same pattern of going up three notes and then back to the original. Then C. Then D. Now that D had an F sharp in it because your G scale has an F sharp in it. So we are doing this pattern uh, in the diatonic major scale. Diatonic is just a fancy way of staying, of saying, staying in the key of the major scale. So only playing the notes that are in your major scale. So back to the D, it is D, E, F sharp, D. Then E, F sharp, G, E. Then F sharp, G, A, F sharp. And then it ends on the G, so the sound's finished. So let's start at the bottom and connect it. So we are going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, and so on and so forth. But everything is going to be connected in eighth notes. So here it is. So that is the ascending part of the pattern. The descending part of the pattern is just the exact opposite. We go down three notes. So we start on the G and we go G, F sharp, E, up to G. And then F sharp, E, D, back to F sharp. E, D, C, back to E. So here it is on the G, G, F sharp, E, back to G. F sharp, so it'd be F sharp, E, D. Then E. Then D, C, B, A, and then land on a G. So the entire descending uh, pattern sounds like this. So that is your major scale pattern, one, two, three, one. I have this pattern written out in four sharps and four flats and a free PDF download. And I'll put the link to that PDF download uh, in the description of this video. But once you get it down, the, the best thing you can do is get rid of the music and play it from ear, play it by ear and play it by memory. And in the beginning, do it one octave and then try to do it over the range of your horn. Now, there are several different things that you can do to this exercise to make it sound way more musical and work on more than just playing fast and clean. The first is dynamics. Add in the dynamics. 
as you are going up, you want to get louder. And as you are going down, you want to get softer. So you want this thing to build as you're going up. You have seven step ups. You have the one, two, three, one, and then the two, three, four, two, and so on and so forth. Each one should be a little bit louder. This is what it'll sound like with some dynamics. Did you hear the dynamics, how that was shaping the phrase? Without the dynamics, it just sounds like this. It sits there really flat. It doesn't go anywhere. But if you shape that phrase and follow those notes, you don't have to do it go crazy with the dynamics, but just when they go higher, lean into it a little bit. When they go softer, lean back out. Going down. So that can help you a lot with your dynamics and just making music sound better in general through dynamics. So you are working on your technique, your fingers, playing in time, and getting your dynamics down. The next thing you can do is change the articulation. Depending on what you're working on, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do this. If you're just really trying to clean up your fingers, the first thing you want to do is slur the entire uh, pattern. Because when you slur it, there's no place to hide. Here's what it sounds like. If you're working on your jazz style, you can also swing the eighth notes. So this will help with your jazz style. You can also assign random articulation. So you can go dot, dot, slur. Or you can go slur, or dot, dot. You can pretty much do anything to it with the articulation to make it sound different. The absolute most important thing to pay attention to when you're working on this exercise is the time. You want your notes completely locked in, locked into that time. So put a metronome on, put it at a tempo that you're really comfortable, get it super locked in and then bump that metronome up. If you're practicing it and it's not perfectly in time and it sounds like this, you are being counterproductive you are practicing not playing in time, and that's the worst thing you can do for your fingers, that's the worst thing you can do for your technique, and that's the worst thing you can do if you're trying to learn how to play fast. An exercise like this, the more you work on it, the faster you get it, the faster you get it, the cleaner you're gonna get it, the cleaner you get it, the easier it's gonna be to play other things fast and clean. That's the whole way uh, technique works. I get the question all the time on social media, what can I do to play faster? And there is no real shortcut to it. The only way to do it is to practice your technique. Practice it consistently, practice it steady, and practice it so that your time is 100% on. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. I hope that this major scale pattern helps you with your technique. I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot.